Security Agency, or the NSA, engages in mass surveillance of American phone records and internet activity, ProPublica 13. A record of most calls made in the U.S. including the telephone number of the phone, the phones making and receiving the call and how long they lasted. This information is called metadata and doesn't include a record of the actual call. Facebook has revealed that they handed over the private data of between 18,000 and 19,000 users to law enforcement of all types. The NSA intercepts a huge amount of raw data and stores billions of communication records per day in its databases. Analysts can see nearly everything a user does on the internet. There is no fully reliable automatic way to separate domestic from international communication. This program also captures some amount of U.S. citizens' purely domestic internet activity. Your data is likely to be in bulk records, such as phone metadata and internet traffic recordings. This is what, this is what makes the program's mass surveillance. Contention two is our advantage to the right of privacy. Government surveillance violates human rights and undermines free societies. It stifles creativity, free expression, and trust between people. Surveillance is destroying the capacity for human beings to communicate and to share information in ways consistent with our fundamental human rights to privacy. The NSA has made it its own explicit policy to collect and monitor every single of electronic communication on the plane on the planet. Studies show that the regardless the amount of official censorship present and stifling of shifting of norms, its respect to privacy expectations, has a marked impact on our willingness to confide, to criticize, to make mistakes, and to change our minds. The true cost of surveillance thus becomes the destruction of society itself. The threat of terrorism should be understood as a built-in cost to living in a free society. We must be willing to accept some risk of catastrophic terrorism to prevent uh, fundamental rights. Wallace 07. What if we decide that a certain base line of vulnerability to ter terrorism is part of the price of the American life and the American idea? Would it be monstrous to refer to 40,000 plus Domestic highway deaths we accept each year, but the mobility and autonomy of the car are inevitably worth a high price. Why now can we not have a serious national conversation about sacrifice and the inevitability of sacrifice? Assume for a moment that some of these measures have really helped make our persons and property safer and is worth the wait. So we propose the following plan. The United States Congress should enact the Surveillance State Repeal Act. Petition three is solvency. The SSR prohibits warrantless surveillance of Americans and protects the right to privacy. 15. This is a meaningful overhaul of the system, getting rid of essential, essentially all parameters of the Patriot Act. The Patriot Act contains many provisions that violate the Fourth Amendment and have led to a dramatic expansion of our domestic surveillance. Our founding fathers fought and died to the kind of warless spying and searches that the Patriot Act and FISA Amendments Act authorized. I reject the notion that we must sacrifice liberty for security. We can live in a secure nation, which also upholds a strong commitment to civil liberties. Okay, so I now stand ready for cross -ads. Okay, um, my first question is, how is the NSA currently monitoring domestic citizens? So unlike other forms of surveillance, they do not have to take a court order or get um, permission from individuals to go through and use software to intercept um, getting phone calls, tracking what you're doing on the internet, and they store it in a massive data set. So they, they intercept data, they don't actively look at that data? They just intercept it and also other private organizations give over the data to them without the user's permission. Which private organizations give over this data? Uh, Facebook and Twitter has come out and said that they do it. They've said that they do do it? Yes. Oh, okay. Um, in the, the 1AC evidence, is that where it says that? Yes. Okay. All right. Thank you. Okay, so I'm starting off with the terrorism disadvantage. My first argument is uniqueness. Current NSA surveillance is preventing terrorist attacks on the United States Fleet 15. The attempted massacre in Garland, Texas was an act of terrorism directed by ISIS, 
ISIS has called for many attacks on the United States. This is why McConnell introduced a clean reauthorization of the Patriot Act. The program has been a successful tool in stopping terrorist attacks, strongly defended by many intelligence officials. This program has helped stop terrorist plots to bomb the New York City subways, stock exchange, and a newspaper. My second argument is the link. NSA mass surveillance is necessary to identify and stop terrorism. Without sorting through some innocent communications, it's impossible to find terrorists, U06. Counterterrorism must search among millions of potentially innocent connections, communications, and links. S link services you must cast a wide net with a fine mesh to catch the clues that enable the next attack to be prevented. They must quickly connect new information before news causes these operatives to disappear. Take 9-11, take 9-11, ties between every single one of the Al-Qaeda plotters known to the CIA to have been in the country. Strong leads could conceivably have led them to all the hijackers had they located some of the operatives through intercepted communications. Um, my third argument is the impact. Terrorism is likely to enrich another 9-11 style attack on America, Kaplan 14. ISIS's increasing power and reach is concerning. Motivation mixed with opportunity, ideology, and foreign fighters. Just last month, a U.S. citizen carried out a suicide bombing in Syria. ISIS now has the capability to tap people with Western passports to send them back to Europe and the United States for terrorist activity. And um, my fourth argument is surveillance does not threaten individual rights and democracy, Lane 13. Methods of surveillance, bribery, blackmail, wiretapping, and infiltration are not normal to tools of democratic governance. It's absurd to suggest that a monitored human being is not a free human being. Political goals make all the difference. No party holds or plausibly aspires to a monopoly on power in this country with its centuries-old constitutional separations of powers, two-party systems, free press, private sector, and robust civil society. The terrorists and other threats about which it gathers secret intelligence are not imaginary. Even the most worrisome issues amount to manageable trade-offs between liberty and security for both the United States and its allies. Okay, I now stand ready for cross-examination. Okay, why are the actual threats to terrorism? Okay, so some t threats to terrorism, our biggest one is ISIS, as most of you have probably heard. They have direct ties with Al-Qaeda. And um, as seen, like how ISIS has posted videos on YouTube, the U.S. is a big interest for terrorism activity, especially for ISIS. And they've also captured U.S. citizens and killed them before. And my card specifically talks about the New York subway terrorist incident. Okay, and is the massive amount of data being collected necessary to stop terrorism? Or are there other internal problems going on necessary? Um, surveillance and collecting the data is necessary to solve terrorism. Um, and then our ev is specifically from counterterrorism experts. And the reason that the data is so necessary is because it keeps track of all phone records and uh, other things that you do over the internet to possibly find connections between terrorism and suspects. Okay, thank you. On privacy, they say that surveillance doesn't threaten rights, but in the status quo, the NSA is collecting large volumes of domestic telecommunications metadata and internet activity. This violates the fundamental human right to privacy. Degradation of privacy impairs our ability to have free social relationships, infringing on societal functions such as freedom of the press. The Surveillance State Repeal Act overhauls the way the NSA operates preserving American civil liberties. Now on to the terrorism disadvantage. Terrorism is not a major threat. That's Mueller and 14. Al-Qaeda scarcely presents a threat. The Boston terrorists of 2013 were the first in the US since 9-11. Before Boston, 16 people had been killed by terrorists in the US. An American's chance of becoming a victim of terrorism is about one in 3.5 million per year. That same American stands a 1 in 8,000 chance of perishing in an auto accident. And privacy outweighs. It is the more probable impact because we can see it happening every day. Our 1AC Wallace evidence indicates that the massive loss of privacy in the post-9-11 world is not worth a minuscule increase in our security from terrorism. And mass surveillance doesn't prevent terrorism. Large volumes of data causes a flood of false positives to Fecky and 15. The more massive the scale of surveillance, the more they serve to direct resources away from appropriate methods. Larger volumes deluge the agencies with multiple false leads. And ask them ready for cross-examination.
Okay. Are your claims based off of counterterrorism or your plan? Uh, so the uh, 2AC Mueller evidence is based off of current counterterrorism uh, methods, but it takes into account things like the Boston bombings and the London bombings and various terrorist attacks that have happened after 9-11. Okay, so how has the government utilized the metadata program to exploit people and, like, their human rights? Uh, so I think the biggest example of this is the way the government has persecuted whistleblowers like Edward Snowden and Julian Assange and Chelsea Manning. Uh, Chelsea has been indefinitely detained. Uh, Snowden, both Snowden and Assange have been forced to take political asylums in other countries. Okay, thank you. First, I'm going to talk about the terrorism disadvantage. Judge, please extend our first piece of evidence, the uniqueness, the flights in 2015 evidence. My friend, really hero Fred, is the real-life Jack Bauer with over 25 years of counterterrorism experience. The NSA metadata program has and actively is preventing terrorist attacks that could have and will harm millions of Americans if you vote for the affirmative plan. They made the argument that there's no real threat of terrorism, but I can tell you that these upstanding U.S. citizens of Garland, Texas, and a little town called New York City were fortunately saved by the federal government investigators when utilizing the metadata information from the NSA collection programs. Judge, I'd also like you to please extend our second argument, the U-Link evidence from 2006. John himself is a former Deputy Attorney General for the United States of America. The key to the NSA's program success is speed. Without being able to quickly connect the dots between clues, communications, and terrorist operatives, the terrorists themselves and themselves will have the ability to vanish, and we won't be able to afford to wait for the cumbersome legal proceedings that will be required by the affirmative plan before moving on real and dangerous scenarios. They said that the NSA program creates false positives, but I'm sorry, their sociology professor lacks the context and experience to make this determination. Judge, like myself, I would believe these uh, national security experts that have written the evidence that the negative is presented to you today. Judge, I'd also like you to please extend our impact evidence. This is from Kaplan in 2014. Terrorists have the motivation, the ideology, and the reach, which are three parts of a recipe for disaster we can't seem to stop. All we can do is prevent the opportunity. Just last month, a U.S. citizen carried out a suicide bombing abroad. Only a vote for the negative ensures that we aren't eating disaster for this Thanksgiving and can continue to enjoy Grandma's cooking. Green bean casserole. I now stand ready for cross-examination. So my first question is, how do we know that current mass surveillance policies are preventing terrorist attacks? Well, we don't know. None of us are national security experts, but the evidence that we're reading are from people with decades of, of counterterrorism experience, and they have cited specific scenarios that have been made public that have been prevented based on this data. Okay. My second question is, why would a international terrorist organization such as ISIS want to attack the United States? Well, by attacking countries like the United States, organizations like ISIS are able to further the illusion in some ways, but the reality in other ways, of their ability to have impacts on powerful and more substantial countries and organizations like the United States. It, it goes along with their agenda, and regardless of why they would want to do it, our evidence indicates that they are doing it. And so, regardless of that reason, we need to stop these incidents from occurring. Thank you. Thank you. Their first argument in their Claybo 15 card said that the plan will decrease surveillance. But our first argument is that the plan is too complicated to work. That's Assange 12. Strategic interception is about intercepting everyone regardless of whether they are innocent or guilty. There will always be lack of political will to expose the spying. It is too easy to get around political accountability and to actually perform interception. 
there's bulk interception occurring, and when there's a legislative pro proposal, it's protect those who are actually doing it. This technology is very complex. And my second argument is that security is necessary to have liberty. It must come first. That's Elstein 03. The primary responsibility of government is to provide the basic security, which is ordinary civic peace. None of the, none of the goods that human beings cherish, including the free exercise of religion, can, can flourish without a measure of, civ of civic peace and security. This civic peace is not promised. If we live from day to day in fear of a deadly attack, the goods we cherish become elusive. We can neither take this civic, this civic peace for granted nor shake off our responsibility to respect and promote the norms and rules that sustain civic peace. And my third argument is to extend our Lane 13 evidence, which was my fourth argument in the 1NC. And they said that in their Wallace 07 evidence that it's okay to possibly die from terrorism, but we don't think that. We disagree with that. We think that it's okay that we should still, that it's better to stay alive rather than to have our rights and then have a big chance of possibly dying from terrorism. Our Mueller 14 evidence states that there is a 1 in 3.5 million chance every year that an American dies in a terrorist attack. Yet, there is a 1 in 8,000 chance of perishing in an auto accident. Even though the U.S. knows that, we do not prohibit our vehicular transportation. The risk of terrorism does not outweigh the chance of the norms that will change as our rights are taken away in the result of the NSA's collection of metadata. Especially when this collection of metadata does not even stop terrorism. This collection is doing more harm, making jobs harder, and leading to false leads. We should not allow the U.S. citizens' rights to diminish as we try to complete an impossible task. Judge, our founding fathers died for this right. We would like to extend our Claiborne 15 evidence. Our plan will prohibit warrantless surveillance, which will still allow security against the terrorists and security that we still have our rights. Judge, if we allow our rights to diminish, we are diminishing the purpose of protecting the U.S., a country that strives to protect our human rights. The affirmative is right, about one thing at least. The United States government is engaging in surveillance that can potentially impinge on our privacy as citizens. But the only reason we have the freedom to sit here and have these public discussions questioning our government's practices is because of this effective program and the brave women and men protecting our lives and constitutional system. Warranted surveillance isn't enough. The only way to prevent an impact of the worst magnitude is a vote for the negative and a vote against the affirmative plan. I want you to please, again, look at our, two, our, our negative evidence, the flights in 2015 evidence. Our evidence from real-life counterterrorism experts, not sociology professors, but people who are out there as our heroes in saving lives. The NSA program works. We have been able to stop very specific terrorist incidents in cities like New York and Garland, Texas, and that's just the tip of the iceberg. That's what we know. That's what's been made public. A vote for the affirmative removes these tools from our first line of defense against threats against our lives and our ability to have these discussions about privacy and privacy rights. Additionally, our U in 2006 evidence is very clear that quick, speedy investigations are necessary in order to stop these attacks, or the ability to stop them will vanish just like the operatives themselves. We need to keep the status quo plan and the Patriot Act as it stands in order to prevent these horrible impacts from happening. Our Kaplan in 2014 evidence has done a great job of explaining that these terroristic threats are real. Besides the specific incidents that I talked about earlier, there are people out there with the ideology and the uh, motivation and the resources that are necessary and uh, give them the ability to affect all of our lives. All we can do is prevent that opportunity for them to do so, and the NSA metadata collection program is what allows us to do that. They continue to make this argument that the metadata program is, is not effective, but as my partner clearly explained in the 1NR, 
the surveillance program that we have and exists is the best way to stop these incidents from happening. If the only way for us to uh, be able to enjoy the freedoms, to talk and debate privacy, to, to protect the constitutional system that was set up by our government is to eliminate these threats to our lives and to a system that protects our ability to have those discussions. Just like we ride in cars, yes, there's, it's a risk that we accept. However, we also now have seatbelts. We also have brakes. We have technologies that allow us to be safer when doing those things and engage in those benefits. A vote for the negative ensures that we have those technologies to keep us alive to drive a car another day. Thank you. We win this debate because preserving Americans' right to privacy is more important than security from a very low risk of a terrorist attack. We win magnitude because surveillance affects everyone. Even if there was a terrorist attack, it would be isolated. We win risk because we know everyone's privacy is being infringed upon. It's happening every day in front of our very eyes. An American is about 438 times more likely to die in a car accident than they are to die in a terrorist attack. And we win time frame because loss of privacy is happening right now, and we know this. Also, metadata leads to false leads. It is not an effective way of preventing terrorism. Chris extended his view evidence that says that they need a quick process to stop terrorist attacks because of the sheer amount of data that intelligence agencies have to sift through. This process is not quick, is, is, uh, is not quick and they are not able to solve for terrorism. Also, you should prefer our Tufiki evidence because he is an academic and is able to look at intelligence from outside of the counterterrorism bubble that their evidence is written in. Also, our plan allows for targeted surveillance, but they have to get a warrant. To extend Chris's car metaphor, they are allowed to drive the car, but they have to drive under the speed limit and get a warrant. Thank you.